Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to another professional best of three series of StarCraft 2. Now what I got for you today is a top of the line match of Terran versus Protoss, where apparently our Terran player is starting off with a bang. Now I can't help but notice that both players are chatting back and forth. I'm afraid that I do not speak Korean. So if anyone feels like translating, and maybe you're curious as well, um, and anyone speaks Korean, feel free to let us know down below in the comment section of the video. Now, I would love to, I would love to introduce the players, but I think this has to be, yeah, it has to be a barracks proxy. There we go. Our Red Terran player, spawning here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, but already introducing one of his structures to the other side of the map. He's from South Korea. He's one of the strongest Terran players of all time. We are currently looking in the main base of innovation. And this man has been doing a lot of proxies in recent times. Now, I'm curious to see how his opponent is going to deal with this, because they have spawned relatively far apart, but now they are pretty close together. Spawning here in the top left-hand corner of the map and playing with the purple Protoss probes. That's a fun thing to say. Purple Protoss Probes. Try and say that three times fast. That's a tongue twister right there. He's also from South Korea. I consider him to be one of the strongest Protoss players on the planet. And while maybe he would get overshadowed a little bit by, for example, Classic, Zest, SOS, uh, Neeb, Stats, you know, those kind of players. Um, I think that this man is absolutely uh, to be recognized. We have none other than Trap. Now, Trap... Coincidentally, it's, it's, it's creating a little bit of a trap right here as well. Trying to see if he can potentially catch any of those units that plan on moving across the map. He also did send out a probe scout, which is very important. So right now he knows perfectly well that something is not quite right. He knows that there is a factory. He knows that there's an orbital command, so that all indicates there's a barracks somewhere. He knows that there's two gases as well, but he hasn't seen the barracks, and that means, indeed, that these Reapers can start dealing a little bit of damage. And I say Reapers, because the second one has already been queued up as well. Now, this is one of the things that is actually relatively low commitment. Terran players really get to decide the pace of the game when they, uh, when they go for this kind of uh, proxy. And it's surprisingly powerful. You can deal so much damage with this, and you can really decide the early pace of the game. I mean, already a second Adept right now has been forced out of the out of the Protoss, and that's not usually what you want to do at this point. So, really nicely done here already by Innovation, to simply, once again, lifting up that barracks and then sending it back home. With a starport coming up, everything is looking like it's supposed to, except for the fact that, of course, Innovation started off with a proxy. Now, I've got a feeling that at some point, right, a couple years in the future, we're gonna look back at these games that people are playing. Um, well, I guess they used to play like a couple of months ago because we're already seeing that proxy stuff a whole lot more these days. But I've got a feeling that at some point we're gonna look back at Terran players in like 2016 or so and rem uh, reminisce over the fact that Protoss players used to imagine that Terran players put their structures inside of their main base. I mean, it almost feels a little bit ridiculous, right? If, if Trap would have not gone for that probe scout, Innovation could have even put up like a, a factory over there and maybe like a, a reactor or something and then start double producing cyclones. There is so much you can do. Now, apparently there were some issues here with the game. I'm not entirely sure. I guess there may have been some hardware issues and maybe some lag spikes or something along those lines. It shouldn't really change up the way that we play this game though. All right. So Trap has decided to go for some Phoenix plays. Second Phoenix is already out on the battlefield. The third one is now being queued up. Now these Widow Mines will immediately be spotted. We do see that cloaking now coming up for the Banshees, but the first the first unit out of the uh, out of the starport is actually a Medivac. Now he tried to boost it away and sneak it out. Looks like the Phoenix is though we're waiting for exactly that. And innovation is not gonna be able to deal the damage that he was looking to deal here with that Medivac. It's so cheeky, man. I really like the direction that TVP is headed into. Although Protoss players definitely will take quite some time to adjust to this new proxy shenanigans. I really like this, right? On paper, that Medivac should have gone uh, should have been gone down a while ago. But he's been trying to sneak it out. And if these widow mines manage to get across the map, I mean keep in mind there's no detection. When you're opening up phoenixes, I mean, he must make an oracle or like, you know, a robotics facility and get observers and all that in order to deal with this properly. So this is uh, a bit of a risky move by innovation, but it can pay off in dividends if he uh, if he manages to get those widow mines burrowed. 
inside of the mineral line, maybe. But I guess he's not even doing that. He's creating like a limbo line. There's one of them right over there, hiding around the corner. This is really cheeky, right? Oh, uh, uh, well, they can take one hit from a Widow Mine, but... Man, they're trying to play a ring around the rosy there. Lifting up the Widow Mine. And even though those hits will connect with the Banshees, that still is not really the damage that Innovation was looking for. Now, look at this, right? This is kind of cool. I, uh, I'm always quite surprised with how this goes. Even though Innovation knows his opponent opened up Phoenixes, he still went for Metavex and Widow Mines, and now also is following it up with Banshees. On paper, it doesn't make sense, but I've seen Terran players get an awful lot of damage out of this shenanigans. Now, I don't know if it was spotted there. No, I don't think so. I think it was just barely not seen. Third Nexus has now been acquired here by Trap. But we used to uh, think of StarCraft in, like, you know, unit counters and all that. And that's definitely not the case anymore right now. Now, Single Observer is out. I think it may very well... Uh, Catch this first uh, Banshee, trying to make its way into the main base. There we go, that one will be picked off. At the same time though, we see this Terran Bio Army now making its way towards the third. Couple of Banshees, uh, or rather a couple of probes here will go down, but I like this a lot. And look at that, two Widow Mines that were left over are burrowing right next to the Siege Tanks. This is a bit of a risk. If the Phoenix is swooping and trying to lift up those, those Siege Tanks, they're gonna be in a world of hurt. <gasps> Beautiful move there by the Terran player. And Innovation manages to kill that third base. So what, what Trap was trying to do there is lift up those siege tanks so they were taken out of the equation and then the bio army can just clean up the rest of those uh, or I guess the Stalkers and the Adept and the Zealot and all that. They, they could just clean up the rest of the bio army and then obviously uh, kill the siege tanks afterwards. But with those two Widow Mines, oh god! Innovation getting cheeky right now as well. But with those two Widow Mines and uh, killing, the, uh, killing the Phoenixes there, all of a sudden, it looks like this game is heavily in favor here of our Terran player. Now, I don't know if Innovation is BMing a little bit. What we do have to keep in mind, right, is that even though he killed his opponent's third base, Innovation doesn't have a third base himself yet either. Instead, opting to go for two additional barracks here. Third Nexus will be acquired once more. The Banshee now scouts it as well. Still, though, this is a pretty scary army here for Trap. The War Prism is now coming up as well, and we gotta keep in mind, Stimpak and Combat Shield have been heavily delayed in order to pull this kind of strategy off. Now, this is always a little sad. Look at this. <laughs> the one shield battery is keeping these probes alive for so very long. Innovation really not getting that much value out of these Banshees whatsoever. And while we wait for these two upgrades to finish, right, I feel like... I feel like there's a little bit of pushing potential right now for Trap. Yeah, he's actually splitting up his army, putting the Observer right there, uh, so he can spot exactly where that army is located. Drop inside of the main base, there's an Immortal in that too, so I like this one a lot, although there's no Observer nearby just yet. The damage is still being dealt anyway. We'll have to keep an eye out right there on whether or not that army starts moving too. It looks like it will right now, now that the majority of that bio army is moved into the main base. Phoenix still manages to lift up one of those siege tanks, and actually both of them, them uh, both of the siege tanks there end up paying for that shenanigans with their life. So really cool move there by Trap, trying to hit at two different angles. Now Combat Shield just finished up, Stimpak is still a couple seconds from finishing. And I'm a little worried about that, right? Because as soon as Stimpak finishes, well, unless he loses all the bio, uh, all of a sudden this can definitely change the tide of battle really, really easily. If that War Prism gets gunned down, it's gonna be lights out here for the Protoss player. There we go, Stimpak is being activated! And all of those units inside of the main base immediately get demolished. Still, this is definitely by no stretch a game over just yet. Trap managed to secure his third Protoss Nexus. He's now going for the Archons, and I think he might be following this up with either Colossi or, of course, Disruptors. Robotics Bay will be coming up here in just a little bit, too. Now, Charge we saw was already done. We're now also seeing that switch into Blink. And as long as he manages to hold on to this third base, he's gonna be in a phenomenal spot. Innovation, though, now marching across the map. Keep in mind, no siege tanks here. Also, third base only just now being acquired. So this definitely has to deal some sort of damage. But without siege tanks, this is a difficult position to hold. First disruptor right now on that production tap as well. Ooh, great force field there, actually. Slowing down a lot of that advancement. But there's no denying that without shield batteries at the third, this is going to be a very tough hold to make. As soon as disruptors are out, though, there's definitely a lot of potential. And even though Trap is keeping his opponent at bay, there are more and more reinforcements moving across. 
I think the Disruptor may very well turn the tide of battle. There it is. With him knocking down those rocks as well, it makes it very, very difficult for the uh, for the Terran player to get in here. And obviously, Disruptors are phenomenal when it comes to killing Widow Mines as well. Great play here. I really like this. There we go. Three Widow Mines are taken care of. Another Disruptor has just rolled out of the robotics facility, but still, that's a lot of bio. That is a lot of Terran bio. One of the Disruptors there does get sniped down there as well by the Marines and the Marauders. Couple more Widow Mines there eventually do get cleaned up, but Marine Marauder, matter of fact, it's the gold standard for many years right now, and for good reason. Innovation managed to snipe his opponent's Nexus for, uh, for the first time just a couple of minutes ago, and it looks like he may very well look to do so once again. The Terran Bio does slowly start to fall, but all of these Marines and Marauders almost have like a personal medivac. Speaking of medivacs, they are running out of energy. Only a single one remains. But Innovation is the one who obtains the victory here in game number one. Alrighty, so that brings us to game number two. And this time around, we are on Cerulean 4LE. Now, I'm not entirely sure if there is any beef between these two players. I mean... They were typing a lot. Innovation with that one emoji, you know, like the smiley face right after he sniped his opponent third Nexus. And, you know, I believe the trap left that game without a GG as well. I don't know if there's any drama between these two guys. I mean, once again, I don't speak Korean. So if anyone feels like translating, I, I'm very curious. I want to I wanna be in on the latest drama, okay? I need to know these kind of things. Um, and also, no GLHF this time around. So I think... I'm starting to get the idea, at the very least, that there's maybe just a little bit of a uh, little bit of beef between these two. Regardless, it does look like this time around, Innovation has decided to not opt for that proxy barracks, and instead he's just putting it inside of his main base. Innovation uh, in 2018 is still definitely a top level player, uh, a top level player rather, but he has been struggling a little bit more. Whereas in every single prior year of his pro gaming career, he has been able to win a premier event. In 2018, he has not won that. So he's not won a premier event. Plus on top of that, he actually did not accumulate enough points either to qualify himself for the BlizzCon Grand Finals that is coming up very shortly. So um, yeah, there's no denying that while Innovation is still a very, very strong Terran player, he has been struggling a little bit more. And I think one of the reasons for that is that while he was always really known for his macro and just his sheer production capabilities, you know, people literally nicknamed him the machine because his, his production and his macro was just better than anyone else. Um, there's no denying that all other players at this level have become absolutely phenomenal at that aspect as well. And someone like, for example, Maru, who's just really good at decision making and who's just really, really good at, um, at, at you know, uh, microing his units on top of all the macro as well. Um, I think that might be one of the reasons why innovation has not been as strong and as dominant as of late. I mean, I make it sound like he's a weak player. He's by no stretch of the imagination a weak player, okay? He's, he's still very, very good. Now, I'm curious to see what kind of what kind of tech trap we'll be going for. In the previous game, we did see that Starport. Starport, of course, uh, a pretty good option. Not as popular these days, I feel like, but it's still, uh, it's still one of the things that players will probably take um, very, very regularly. I mean, I see it probably... Not, not as popular as it was once upon a time. Probably still the majority of the games. This time around, though, it is going to be a Twilight Council. Now, the Reaper is currently moving across. It's met by a single Adept. And now, actually... Oh, I thought the probe was going to go back in and maybe try to get the sniper there on the probe that's building the command center. Looks like it will just simply be left once again. Innovation is going to continue to chatting. No GLHF this game, just, just chatting. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. This is actually rather annoying right now, though, for the Terran player here in red, because not only is he not going to finish up that command center, he's also going to have some trouble here when it comes to the supply block. The supply depot was actually lower there, and that means the trap manages to get into the main base, but he does decide to cancel the shade there just before it finishes. Blink is coming up here for trap. Okay. I like this. I think Blink, in general, is one of those upgrades that you can't really go wrong with, as long as you're good at microing your army. He still has this probe out as well, so he could always go ahead and produce a proxy pylon. Something along those lines. I've been seeing some really cool play as well with war prisms and whatnot. There's there's really a lot of variety right now in TVP when it comes to the Protoss um, tech choices, I suppose. For the longest time, people were just doing the exact same thing. I like this, right? Look at that. Innovation knows that the Widowmine placement has been spotted, so he moves it around. Trap right now, once again, shades off towards the high ground. I wonder if Innovation, once again, is going to move it. 
Uh, that's a pretty good spot in general, though. You're going to be able to uh, use that in the engagement. Now, additional barracks here, or rather additional gateways here, are coming up, as well as that robotics facility. So I think there's going to be some War Prism play here as well by Trap. He could just transition to watch a third Nexus if he really wants to. This probe eventually, though, does get spotted, and Trap is going to lose that one scout that he had over at the third base of his opponent. Man, they just keep typing back and forth. There used to be a rule back in um, official events that Caps uh, Kespa was putting out in, in StarCraft 1 in particular. Um, but um, if you basically said anything during any of the Kespa games... Actually, hold that thought, because a couple units are trying to make their way into the, into the main base here, apparently. Mostly just a scout, I suppose, because it's been awfully quiet here on, uh, on the Protoss side of the map. But there used to be a, a rule in Caspa games that if you typed anything but GLHF and GG, you would be disqualified from the tournament. Which is a little bit extreme as well, because literally if you made a typo, like if you accidentally wrote like G instead of GG, you would be disqualified. If you did like GLHF without a space in between, you'd be disqualified. It, it was a little bit extreme and something that um, I personally didn't really like very much, but there's also something to be said about not continuously typing in the game, right? Which is obviously what, what they were trying to prevent. I guess, um, I guess there were some issues where people were just simply typing continuously as part of their strategy. Just type stuff and then hopefully you can distract your opponent. Regardless, third Nexus has been taken right now, but we also see five additional gateways here coming up for Trap. He's got double forges, so it does sort of look like he doesn't want to get too aggressive. Because Double Forge does indicate he wants to uh, play a bit more of a macro game. But if he if he can, and if he has the Wiggle Room, he definitely can warp in an awful lot of those Stalkers. And maybe even some Zealots here in just a little bit as well. Relatively passive game though, so far. So this would be around the time that we would expect additional Barracks to go down here for Innovation. Or a third Command Center. So I'm going to keep an eye out on that Production tab to see what his exact plan is. He could do a move out and then follow it up with a command center here, or he could try and just simply uh, build one inside of the main and then lift it up over there, or he could just add on additional production facilities. All of it is possible. He did get himself a really nice army, though, and you can see that these units will arrive on the other side of the map right around the same time as plus one infantry weapons finishes up. Yeah, I think Innovation was planning to go for a command center right there at the third. Won't be happening with that one adept being an absolute nuisance. He's gonna have to send another one here if he wants to, but at the same time, on the other side of the map, the Protoss army is awaiting a big engagement. Forcing the, uh, the Burrow right there of the Widow Mines, just slowing down his engagement, is always going to be what Trap is looking for. The longer that this engagement takes, the bigger this Protoss army will become and the easier it will be for Protoss to defend. So any time he can buy is absolutely critical. He does need to be careful though. Great force fields, man. Slicing off a part of that army. Now the Medivac pickup there, the swoop in there was absolutely beautiful as well. Still though, these Immortals and Stalkers, they are going to be able to tear through this Marine Marauder army very, very easily. Six more Stalkers are being warped in. They're actually inside of that main base, as two Medivex managed to uh, slip out of that uh, main base of the Terran as well. And they're gonna force at least some of that army to move around at the same time. Oh god, Trap's army is on move command. That's a big deal. A lot of important units there. Those Immortals managed to get sniped relatively easily. That means that all of a sudden, this Terran army is looking menacing. Still, though, Innovation might just be overstaying his welcome, because now that the drop in the main base has been dealt with and all of the units uh, of Protoss can group together, I think that he does have more than enough here to clean this up. At the very least, ooh, well, I thought that Protoss had more than enough here to clean all of that up, but there's still so much Terran continuously reinforcing. Even though there are eight gateways, right, and so many Zealots can continuously be warped in, the Micro of Innovation has been solid enough to actually stay in this game for a little while longer. Now keep in mind, right, Innovation still does not have that third base landed. So the longer that this engagement goes on, the more the economy lead of Protoss will become apparent. But Innovation is just piling on the pressure. He's trying to see if he can potentially finish this game right here, right now. And if, if somehow, some way, Protoss manages to hold, he's going to be in a really, really good spot. Still, though, ooh, these medifacts are running out of energy, yeah. Uh, still, though, the, uh, the Terran is going to try and continue the aggression for a little while longer, but... With those Medivacs running out of energy and pretty much all these Marines and Marauders now having their personalized Medivac, 
um, I think that innovation is going to have to step off the gas. That was real close. How many workers in total were killed there? So seven workers in the entirety of this game. No innovation while that was going on. Ooh. <laughs> the Widow Mine connecting there actually with the Observer. Hurting some of those SCVs there in the process as well. Uh, but while that was going on, Innovation got himself that third Orbital Command too. So he managed to uh, he managed to pile on the pressure. Trap almost ended up losing there, but I really don't mind the position here that the Protoss player is in right now. Although I am missing splash damage. He is gonna have to either get some um, some 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 hero. What are they called? Um, High Templar. What do you call a zealot that smokes weed? A high Templar. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, he's gonna have to either get himself some High Templar or some Disruptors once again. I think all of those are gonna be great choices. Even Colossi. I don't mind Colossi either. The Colossi are gonna be a pretty good option. Because once this Terran army grows, it's difficult to deal with it with just, uh, you know, the, the base gateway units and some Immortals. There we go. We do now see that Templar Archives coming up. Judging by the fact that we also see the shield upgrade coming, I guess the trap is planning to go for some uh, some of those Archons here shortly too. He does have a pretty nice amount of units, but man, this Terran army is not slowing down. Once again, beautiful force fields there. It's gonna slow down the advancement of Terran here for a little while, but that's still an awful lot of, uh, of Marines and Marauders. Is there even an Observer over here? Ooh, I gotta be a little careful. There's uh, two observers out on the map. Yeah, there's actually an observer right over there. I didn't even see that one. Regardless... Yeah, with this concave, though, by Protoss that's being set up right here on the top of the ramp, and actually that shield battery tickling away to repair some of those shields as well, I think that trap should have enough here to at the very least stand uh, where he's at. At the same time, looks like uh, the warp prism managed to make its way to the other side of the map. It's warping in units. It's already wondering where he was warping in all of those reinforcements. It turns out he's not warping in reinforcements at all, and instead he's decided to get a lot of zealots inside of his opponent's main base. And not only does this force the Terran army to retreat, it manages to kill a stupid amount of workers there. Just a handful of zealots killing workers left and right. Great move there by Trap, really getting himself that value. And now that he's got Storm underway as well, I am very curious what that next engagement is going to look like. Storm is about, I would say, halfway done right now with Chrono Boost on it. It should finish relatively quickly. There's already a couple of High Templar out as well, so they should be able uh, to land some juicy storms on this Terran Bio Force, and at the very least force the Micro, force those Terran units to run around. And now that Terran is is once again going to try and rebuild, uh, rebuild the economy, right? This is 100% a game that is in favor of the Protoss player. Now there's two ways he can try and, and capitalize. Okay, the first one is to go for a push, and the second one is to go for an expansion. I like this. Sometimes it's difficult to call whether or not you actually want to push. Trap showing us that he is feeling confident when you're ahead, try to get more ahead. It's, it's a good rule to live by. Now, he could obviously still try and put on some pressure as well. He did just deal a lot of damage to his opposing player's army, but there's no denying that Innovation has still been on top of the macro. I mean, of course Innovation has been on top of his macro. Storm is done right now, though. Is there still a Warp Prism out here? Yeah, there is still a Warp Prism. It's hanging out on the left-hand side of the map. I do think that this army is going to need one here in just a little bit. He might even want to load some of those uh, some of those Templar inside of that Prism as well. Scan's going down, though. Right on top of all of those Protoss units. And I think that is going to allow, at the very least, Innovation to once again decide that apparently he wants to move back. War Prism coming in. I would love to see just like a Viking to snipe these uh, these War Prisms because it's dealing way too much damage to him. It's a lot of damage that's being dealt with just a single War Prism here and it's continuously keeping Innovation back. Now even though Innovation lost so many workers, he's got a menacing army, man. This is 200 army supply right now or, or 200 supply here for Terran. And this is not nearly as big of an army right now for Protoss. Now keep in mind, Storms can 100% turn the tide of battle. Beautiful Storms there, shutting down a lot of that Terran army already. Once again, though, Storms actually hitting some of the uh, friendly units there as well. Force Fields trying to keep some of those units back. At the same time, it does look like we see one Zealot slicing away 
near the third base of the Terran player. Stormsdale, man, providing so much value. Disruptor's now coming out as well. I like that decision. Going for two sources of splash, although the Disruptor there immediately has to pay for the shenanigans with its life as well. The Immortals stand tall. That's the one thing that's really been, um, that's really been keeping the Protoss player in the game. Five Immortals continuously shooting away at all of this bio army, and even though they aren't really meant to kill Marines, they can still tank so much of that damage, and even though the army supply right there was in favor of innovation, it is Trap who wins this match. Alrighty, so here we are in game number three of this series. Now, I've really got a feeling like there's a little bit of drama going on, because innovation also left that previous game without a GG. It's very un-innovation like, you know what I mean? Hmm. I almost feel like picking up, uh, you know, uh, some, 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 some Korean classes just to learn what's going on. I mean, I can speak a couple languages. I don't know how hard it would be, though, to learn uh, Korean. From what I've heard, apparently the alphabet itself is, is relatively easy to learn. Regardless, though. Once more, we see that SCV moving across the map. And I think that innovation, indeed, is gonna proxy another one of these barracks. You know what? I would like him to commit to something a little bit more aggressive. I wouldn't mind it whatsoever if he decides to proxy a factory and then make a reactor on the barracks and then switch them over and start producing a whole bunch of cyclones and I'm making angry like mouse movements so you know how committed I would like him to be to that aggression. Once again, though, Trap is gonna send out a probe to the other side of the map. Neither player giving each other the good luck, have fun, because instead... I, I, I'm gonna continue not being able to comprehend what it is they're typing. Now, second gas has once more been taken, though. Trap should know exactly what it is he's going up against, considering innovation has already shown us exactly what's going on. You know what? One of the critiques that a lot of people had of innovation for a really long time is the fact that he is rather predictable. He does not mind going for the same build order over and over and over again. And with people catching up, I suppose, in the macro, um, and and really being able to um, and really being able to like produce as much as he is, I think it just has been a little bit more difficult for him to be able to actually win a lot of events. The thing is. We've seen him go for, for cheese as well, which is like a new thing for innovation. But now he's doing the exact same thing as he did in game number one once again, right? So I feel like that's kind of playing into Trap's favor. Because Trap already has seen what it looks like. He knows that innovation likes to do the exact same thing a hundred times over. For example, in the games that I casted recently between like Gumiho and Dark and stuff, those those are, are those are the kind of players that really adjust to their opponent more so than just the matchup. And I feel like innovation is not... You know, he, he's very set in his ways and he's very good at playing what he does, but it becomes a little predictable and people just simply counter him rather than, uh, rather than uh, the matchup itself. Maybe the longer that the game goes, the less it will go in favor of innovation just because he really plays these super flushed out strategies. Now, can you jump up there? I'm afraid not, Mr. Innovation. It's gonna be a very difficult uh, jump. I mean, on paper, you'd imagine they could just like, you know, <laughs> go over there. On paper, you'd imagine that Reapers could fly, right? Just just power your jetpacks a little bit harder, and, and I guess you could fly. Although, I guess if, if you know, <laughs> Reapers could fly in StarCraft, that would change the dynamic of all early game units quite a little bit. Trap, though, doing the same counter as he did in game number one as well. Let's see if he once more will pick up the three Phoenixes. Are we gonna see, once again, Widow Mines? Of course. Widow Mines will be coming up. Likely also then that medivac. Are we gonna see a tech lab? Not a tech lab this time around. So it is a it is a slight switch up right here by innovation. Also, we do not see that delay right here on the command center like we saw in the previous one. Building it on the low ground and all that. Nice little move here by the Terran player. Reapers roaming around. Quite important to keep those alive for as long as possible. They can provide a lot of scouting information. Now I say that. One of them will have to pay for this small little misstep with its life. But as long as you have one, you can always send it around the loop-de-loop -loop and figure out what is going on. I like this, though. This is like creating that wall over here, preventing the Reaper from just simply getting in. The only way of getting into the main base of Protoss right now is by going through the natural. Or, I guess, with a drop. But it's, uh, it's much harder right now for the Terran player to get that scouting information that he very much so would like to have. Couple Phoenixes already queued up. Now, the Widow Mines 
are already available too. We see one medivac full of widow mines now. Making its way towards the natural of the protos. It will even scout that there's already a probe here. Looking to take the third nexus. But here we go. Widow mine drop is going down. A lot of units are trying to target to fire it as well. Ooh, that's an awful lot of probes there. Going down there. In the grand scheme of things, I guess five is acceptable. It looked like actually uh, that it was a lot more. And considering innovation lost pretty much all his units there, that wasn't that amazing for him. Five probes, I think, for, for four Widow Mines and a Medivac. I think that's a, an exchange you will take. Now, innovation. <laughs> if it broke, don't fix it. Decided to uh, to load up another Medivac with four Widow Mines. And he's going to try and Widow Meme his opponent once more. Four, four Widow Memes. <laughs> try, try to just simply load him up once again. And, and surprisingly enough, it looks like this may very well work. Now... The Phoenixes, though, are still in the main base. They're not going around. And once more, man, this is deja vu, right? We've seen this just seconds ago in the exact same game. This time around, it went even more so in favor right here of Trap. Much better response. Manages to lift up those units, although one Widow Mine. That one could still burrow. Innovation doesn't realize it, and he is forced to go back. Oh, are you kidding me? Innovation, you're not a one-trick pony. <laughs> It's like, dance, monkey, dance! And you just do the same dance a hundred times. That's a curious spot. Oh my god. Is he a ma- is he- Okay, he's trying to bait these- He's trying to bait these phoenixes. He's gonna try and bait these phoenixes to watch the Widow Mines. This is so dumb. He's trying to basically pretend that this Medivac is full of Widow Mines to- to bait these phoenixes to come and get him. So he showed the Widow Mine right there, or, or rather the Medivac right there to- uh, to the Protoss vision. And then he was gonna, I think, at the very least, boost back over these Widow Mines. Then load them up and then once go, uh, once, once more go. Well, I guess it has potential. Trap, though? I mean, his name is literally Trap. He's not gonna just walk into your trap, you know? That'd be stupid. <laughs> That's like calling yourself innovation and being one of the less, like, one of the least innovative persons in the StarCraft 2 community. <laughs> He's trying it again. He's like, hey, I'm here. Come and get me. Oh, don't do it, trap. Don't... Trap. Trap. Okay, 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 okay. There's some irony, though, right? Trap is trying to, uh, trying to get trapped, and Innovation is doing a strategy that's not very innovative at all. Another set of Widow memes was dropped off inside of the main base, though, of the Protoss player, and this time around... Yeah, they're, they're also not being able to deal any damage there. Zero damage being done whatsoever. Well, oh my god. It looks like Innovation is kind of like styling on, on his opponent right now, right? I don't know if you want to do that. I mean, these games right here are part of the Kung Fu Cup is what it's called. I believe it's like a $500 first place price. You don't want to just give that up. Um. Yeah, that's a little awkward as well. All right. In the meantime, we haven't looked at the Terran base in a little while. Innovation has been making Marines, Marauders, Medivacs, and Mines. Basically, any unit that starts with an M. <laughs> if it starts with an M, he's, he's alright with making it. If it is any other name, though, don't even, you know, don't even consider it. If it starts with the M, memes, you know, he, he's all for those. I don't know, man. I'm seeing the double period right there at the sentence. That's the only thing I'm getting, you know. If someone types like two or three periods at the end of the sentence, I, I'm thinking they're disappointed or maybe just a little bit salty, you know? It's like, are you kidding me? Dot, dot, dot. Are you here? And are you on time? Dot, dot, dot. You know, there's this expectancy there if you type the, the, the multiple dots. Anyway. Storm will be available here. Trap is playing extremely defensively. Not taking any risks here whatsoever. Getting himself a big Protoss army. It's been working well for him so far in these games, right? He's been showing us his micro. If he once again goes Disruptors, this is almost like an identical game to game number two. Except for the direction that we took, I suppose, in the mid game. Now, Innovation is gonna go for a push, but keep in mind, in comparison to game two, he's got that third command center already done, which is really quite important. He's gonna start what seems to be a bit of a slow push, but... I mean, the Widow Mines, man, they're being picked up before they can do any kind of damage whatsoever. Beautiful little move there. At the cost of a couple Zealots, he got himself some of those units that deal splash damage out of the equation! Oh, that was beautiful! Oh, well, I don't even need to know what that means. I know exactly what it is he's thinking. The force fields behind, the storm right on top of it as well. That was beautiful. 
Man, I, I, there's never been a moment where I wish I'd speak Korean more than right now. I've never been to Korea, I would like to. Seems like the food and whatnot is amazing, but now I need to learn the language as well, you know? It's critical. Even though I think a lot of people will speak English, or maybe at least some. Oh, well, those storms, they're getting rid of the majority of the Widow Mines, and uh, it, it, it looks like this fight is gonna go more and more in favor right here of Trap, right? Ooh. Well, that trap right there was quite nicely set up, though. Innovation, forcing those phoenixes to fly all over it as well. And when you're chasing a, a Terran army, it's usually a little bit tricky. There's no blink on these stalkers. It's just gonna finish up, actually, in about 10 seconds or so from now. War Prism is now also available, and that means that more stalkers will become... Um, out, or will be coming out on the battlefield here, and the War Prism is now loaded up with more High Templar, too. Wouldn't mind setting up a bit of a trap. Not all too surprising. Storming that supply depot. That'll teach him. And actually, all things considered, man, this is starting to look like an engagement that is pretty great for our protos. Now, I like that position here of the supply depots a lot. Creating more or less like a maze, which always will go in favor of units that can shoot at a range, obviously. So Zealots charging through that is gonna, you know, is gonna make it much easier for these protos, or for these Terran units, rather, to pick all of that up. And obviously, um, it sort of creates like a natural barrier as well, because your units can't really be clumped up together nearly as much. While that was going on, though, Trap once again transition towards his trusty good old Disruptors. He's got two more coming out right now. And I think he's just going to continuously get more and more of them. Now, the transition here from Innovation is to Ghosts. I think he may be assuming that his opponent is planning. Actually, hold that thought. We see once again a bit of a, a, bit of a Zealot drop, but I think he's... He's assuming his opponent will go for more High Templar, but the Disruptors are already coming out. And Disruptors, of course, don't really have, like, a unit counter other than Micro. Man, these Zealots are, are continuously being a nuisance, though, right? Really annoying here for the Terran player to deal with all of this. A couple of Ghosts are now loaded up into Medivacs. Dude, this is so strange, right? We see War Prisms loaded up with High Templar, and then we see Medivacs loaded up with Ghosts. Obviously, when you put the ghost in, uh, or rather the, Medi or the, the, the High Templar inside of a War Prism, they cannot actually just be uh, EMP'd very easily. Now, I like this building placement here a lot, creating like these funnels. At the same time, though, the Terran army is advancing forward. Disruptors finally activating their Purification Novas. EMP will still be decent enough, but ooh, two massive storms still land on that army. And while uh, there's Micro going on on both ends, I think this has to go in favor right here of Trap, right? I mean, he's getting so much value out of all of this. War Prism eventually looks like it will go down. Nice play there by Innovation, grabbing himself one of the scariest threats in the game. Great blink timing there, though, by Trap, killing that, uh, that Widow Mine right when it was just about to connect. And apparently, Innovation does decide to GG out of this game. I think he just scanned. The fourth base, yeah. He just scanned the fourth base, that's what we heard. And at that point, he recognized, wait a second. Let's let's go back for just a second here. Um, I think um, I think at that point, he recognized, okay, there's no way for me to actually continue playing, yeah. He did just scan that at the last possible moment, and that forced him to go out of this match. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this more so, I guess, dramatic version of Terran versus Protoss. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I will see you once again in the next one.